Gary. Welcome, everybody. Um, it is approximately 1 o'clock, uh, right at the top of the hour. Um, I'm on the East Coast. I'm in Florida, so we are currently experiencing a little bit of weather here. Um, that uh, just wanted to uh, alert you to that, just in case we lose connection or um, my voice goes in and out. But hopefully that won't affect us today. Uh, we're here for about the next uh, next hour, a little bit less than that. Maybe we're just going to go over the RAT5 overview, and we're going to talk about its applications. So hopefully you'll all be able to sit back and relax, and uh, please feel free to put any questions you have in the chat box. I can address those as I see them come up. So this is our agenda for today. Uh, we are going to go over background uh, of the test. We're going to talk about an overview of it, what it is, and um, what exactly we're measuring with the RAT5. Uh, we will talk about the test structure, and also really the, the end of this is going to be talking about applications, and specifically how we can use the RAT5 to answer uh, questions, clinical questions, um, academic questions coming into us that we may, uh, may need to uh, address. So if we go back in terms of what we, what we know for the RAT5, its history, its background, uh, the authors are Gary Wilkinson and Gary Robertson. And the history, but the history goes, goes way back. The history goes way back to the 40s um, with a norm update in 1978. And I believe the current authors um, came on board with the RAT in the 80s. So we have the RAT R coming out in 84, the RAT 3 coming out in 93, the RAT 4 coming out in 2006, and now the fifth edition coming out in 2017. <clears throat> so what I want to really just show you uh, and kind of get the point across with this type of slide is that this is a test that has a long history. Um, it's been used quite frequently. It's used um, pretty widely in our profession and in our field, um, and, and it goes back very far. So it's a, it's a long trusted academic achievement measure that, to think about what it is. Um, I think that's really one of the most important questions to start with. Um, why are we pulling this out of our toolkit? Um, why do we need to have it as part of our toolkit? And what, what are we specifically going to be looking at with it? Well, it is efficient. Uh, it's, it's short, and I'm going to show you that as we go along. It's easy to administer. Um, you know, that's one of the that's one of the key pieces that uh, myself as a psychologist and other of my colleagues talk about frequently, which is the ease of administration for the RAT5. That's one of the keys uh, for for why a lot of uh, a lot of professionals like to use it. But it's also psychometrically sound. Um, and if you think about the history of uh, of the test going back to the 40s, you have a test that's been researched uh, and 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 revised and and um, updated. Uh, with, with a long, long history of, of our understanding of how to measure certain skills. So when you have that history, um, the, the psychometrics of it just get better over time, uh, and that's really a benefit to it. And we're really looking here at foundational academic skills. So I want to differentiate that for you from what would be considered more of a, a, a comprehensive measure. You know, comprehensive measures, and I'll just name a few, like the, uh, the Wexler uh, Achievement Test, the, the Kaufman Achievement Test, um, the the uh, Woodcock-Johnson achievement test, Th those types of assessments, while we're measuring, um, uh, are also measuring academics, those are more comprehensive because we're looking at skills um, from, multiple, from multiple data points um, rather than just a single data point. What the RAT5 is giving us is, uh, is an estimation of overall skill um, based on four data points in word reading, sentence comprehension, spelling, and math computation. If we think about what is the purpose of this tool, I think that's really sort of the most important point, right? Uh, you know, we put a lot of effort into revising tests and making sure that they meet the standard rigor of our professions, but really pulling it out is, is what I always come back to as being one of the more important things to consider when you're pulling out a test. But it does support the evaluation process for estimating strengths and weaknesses. Um, and, and I wanted to say estimating there because if we're looking at strengths and weaknesses, we tend to, as best practice indicates, look for multiple data points. And what the, uh, what the, um, the RAT5 does give us is, is a single data point for each of these areas. So I want to say estimating there, although it can lead us to more comprehensive assessment over time, I want you to, to step back and just make sure you know that we are looking at a screening type of a measure for a specific data point. And when we look at these strengths and weaknesses, or we estimate a person's academic skills, it does indicate to us how well a person learns. Uh, it can be used for job readiness. And you know that, that second bullet point, job readiness, there's lots of research out there that talks about the use of these four types of academic measures to indicate whether or not somebody's ready for uh, a job or, or job placement. 
transition from special education services at 21 into the adult workforce, for example. So there are a lot, there's a lot of research out there that talks about using this type of data for that. And also the functional academic skills piece. And, and what, what that means, I maybe, maybe I can get into that a little bit more, provide a little more data later on, or a little more information later on about that. But if we're looking at older adults, looking at uh, trying to figure out um, level of care and so forth, functional skills are really important for us to, uh, for us to evaluate. It does go beyond the school setting. It's super important for us to remember that even though this is an academic